Good morning and welcome to the 3 Bike Garage. Thank you guys for joining me. In our last video, we pretty much completely disassembled Apollo 911's broken LS2, went inside, saw the damage, saw the carnage. In this video, I'm going to be going deeper inside the engine. All you guys have been requesting, you want to see the cylinder walls, you want to see deeper into the engine and see the block completely disassembled. This video is for you guys. If you guys have not seen the last video where we tore down Apollo 911's engine, check the link above here. So today I'll be tearing the engine down to the bare block and then in the end of the video I'll be discussing the reasons why I've decided to not use this particular LS2 and Apollo 911. Anyway, let's get to work. Now we'll quickly disassemble the remainder of the engine, take a look at the crankshaft, take a look at the cylinder walls, pull out more of the pistons, pull out the main caps and see what the overall condition of the engine block is. Okay, so another top tip. Normally, if we are going to reuse these parts, uh, especially rocker arms and push rods, you wanna keep them in the same order as you remove them from the engine. Because once you have wear patterns in the engine and you go put these parts back in, you wanna make sure they go back where they were. You can cause issues, cause problems. Another top tip, you never want to reuse head bolts, especially on LS engines. These bolts, the small ones down below here, larger ones in the middle and the top, you never want to reuse any of the head bolts. They are a torque to yield design. That means when you torque them down, the metal bends and contorts hold them in, and once you remove them, they're all stretched out. You cannot reuse these head bolts. What I want to do now is go ahead and remove the rest of the caps on the crankshaft and we'll remove all the pistons. After we remove all the pistons, then we'll go ahead and we'll remove the main caps and inspect the journals and bearings on those areas. Mm -hmm. There goes that. We're not reusing that piston. Those rods are no good. Alrighty, now we'll go ahead and remove the damper from the crankshaft and we'll remove then the timing cover. So to remove the damper, we're gonna need a puller. This particular puller system works really good. It's got all kinds of different uh, attachments, universal, remove all kinds of dampers, steering wheels, uh, bearings, things of that nature. It's made by OTC, really good stuff. Go ahead and zip off this damper bolt. There we go. All right. Zips that damper right off. Got that damper out. Let's go ahead and remove the timing cover here. Zip this baby right off. Ow! Get a little antsy there. Pop that baby right off. Let's zip off this oil pump. So here's pieces of, looks like a little gasket from the oil pump. Ah, so it looks like the oil pump shredded some pieces here and these pieces ended up in the pickup tube. One timing chain removed. Remove the lifter trays here. Tim Lum here. These things come right out. Super easy. This bad boy side here. Lifter trays just pull right out. All right, so an easy way to pull out the lifters is grab a little telescoping magnetic tool here. It's got a magnet in the end. Stick it in here. 
and you can pull out the lifters nice and easy. These lifters don't look bad. So same deal. If you're gonna reuse the lifters, you wanna make note of where they come out of. You don't wanna put used lifters back into different holes. You wanna put them back in the same holes. That one came out easy. Eight down, eight to go up the side. Really should remove the rear engine cover here. It's gonna be kind of a pain to get to, but let's go ahead and do that. And then after we remove the rear engine cover here, then we will remove the one, two, three, four, five caps, five mains. A little cramped quarters here, but we're getting it. We're All getting right. it. You gotta be patient. All right, at this point, what I like to do is remove the main caps. We'll inspect the bearings there. I know you guys said you want to see those bearings. We'll, we'll inspect those. We'll pull out the crank. We'll check the, the block where the crank goes on the block. Check it, see how it is. Break these bad boys loose here. Pop this bad boy out. Rear main cap. More spun bearings. Okay, let's take a look at this one here. Yeah, this one scratches well too. Spun, scratches, not good. Look at that there, you can see some deep scoring right there. Yeah, you can see the center cap here is really scored too. Completely shot. Even with the crankshaft completely loose, all the caps loose, trying to turn it, just really turns rough. This doesn't turn. This should turn nice and smooth, a little resistance. Let's pull this baby out. Oh, okay, dokey. Got this thing out. Heavy mother. Yeah, these bearings are, are toast here. These things are in really bad shape. Let's now remove the cam plate here and we should be able to just pull the cam out. Cam plate. So the cam is turning nice and free. I don't feel any resistance on the cam. It's turning nice and free. Let's pull it out nice and easy. Pull it straight out nice. Clear that last journal. And just pull it out. There you go. This journal here seems to be nice and clean, nice and smooth. So the good news is, looks like the cam journals here are pretty decent. Doesn't look bad actually. All right, just gonna do a little cleaning here on these cylinder walls. Now I'll grab the camera and let's inspect these bores. Let's see how they look. As far as I can tell, I don't really see any major damage on the cylinder walls. They all seem to be in pretty good condition. You can kind of see there, don't see any really deep scratching or scoring, just kind of normal wear. A little bit of wear here, not a big deal. It's kind of hard to see, I know, on the camera, but if you look closely, you can still see the cross hatch. Take a look at that. Try to get some light here. So these cylinder walls seem to be pretty good. Tell me what you guys think in the comments. I think it looks pretty good. This one's got a little bit of, it's got a little bit of wear there. I think with some light honing, that'll be all right. This block seems to be in pretty good condition. You can see the cam bearings here. That was a little bit worn, but the cam was turning nice and easy, nice and smooth. Uh, new cam bearings there, and we'll be good to go. All right, you guys can take a look now. Deep inside, you can see the rear cam journal. 
Doesn't look too bad. You can see that one. The cylinders. Overall, from what I can tell, the block looks to be just fine. This is a good core for a rebuild. All right, guys. Well, as you guys can see, we got the engine completely disassembled and have determined that the block is good. It is savable. See, we got all the parts here on the floor here. <laughs> Bunch of parts here. That's the LS1 block. But the rest of these parts here are from the LS2 and Apollo 911. That's the LS1 block from my O2 Corvette. Let's kind of go over the plans as to what we're gonna do here. I am not going to rebuild this LS2. And the reason why, let me show you. Check this bad boy here out. I was able to find a documented 27,000 mile LS2 out of an 06 Corvette. I ended up finding this motor on the Corvette forum. I've been a member on the Corvette forum since 1999 and have a pretty good reputation there. I was able to find a seller who has also been a member for many, many years. And this guy is a very reputable seller. And he found me this LS2 block out of an 06 Corvette. This is actually an engine that was taken out of the car, not because it was wrecked, but because the guy ended up putting a 427 in his car. Okay, so I know some of you guys are probably disappointed because you want to see a complete engine rebuild series on the channel. But don't fear, that is actually going to be happening. This is one of the reasons why I decided to source a new LS2 for Apollo versus rebuild the existing LS2 that we have here. So I've got the LS1 out of my C5 Corvette and I plan to do a performance build about 500 horsepower more or less on this particular engine. One of the great power adders for an LS1 is adding LS2 243 heads. 243 LS heads work really good on an LS1 engine, add a ton of power, and they're around five, six, seven hundred bucks. I was able to buy the new LS2 engine for $3,500 shipped to me, so it doesn't really make sense to rebuild the engine. A, a proper rebuild on an engine is gonna cost you know, many thousands of dollars in good parts. So what I've decided to do is I will have a engine rebuild video series on the LS1 and I'll be using these heads, the old heads from Apollo 911 will live again. I'll have these cleaned up, I'll have them gone through, redone. Uh, any heads you buy, you're gonna have to do that anyway. So I'm saving myself about five, 600 bucks by using these heads that are on Apollo's old LS2. Regarding the LS2 block from Apollo 911, we've determined it's in fantastic condition, no problems, it's an excellent core for a rebuild. At this point in time, I don't really have a need for it, so if you guys want to purchase it from me, go ahead and make me an offer. In the end, while I'm not rebuilding Apollo 911's LS2, I will be doing a full LS1 engine rebuild series on my C5 Corvette when I make the videos on it. Let's go back now to Apollo's new LS2. So as I told you, this is a LS2 out of an 06 Corvette, pretty much the same motor that came out of Apollo 911. Now, what are we going to do to modify this engine to eliminate the oil starvation problems? Number one, we're gonna be installing an AccuSump oil system. What this does is, it is a system that will hold oil in a cylinder under pressure, and whenever it senses that the engine is low in pressure, it then provides pressure to the engine. It's kind of like a reserve oiling system whenever it senses that the engine is starved for oil. Now I did look into the dry sump systems and the problem with the dry sump systems are number one they are costly but really the biggest problem with a dry sump system is there just really is no room. Everything is so tightly packed on Apollo 911. I've just looked and looked and looked and looked and there really is just no room to install a dry sump oiling system within the car. It's just it's just that tight. I've spoken to the people at Renegade Hybrids. Uh, I've spoken to people on uh, Facebook user groups, the guys from LS Swap Forums. A lot of guys are running these cars on the track with no problem. I'll also be installing baffles in the engine oil pan to help with the cornering forces and the G's when you're on the track. So between those two things, 
I think we'll be okay. There's plenty of guys, like I said, that are running this setup on their LS Swap Force 911s, and they have no problems. All right, guys. Well, thank you very much for tuning in. Now you guys know what we're doing with Apollo 911. So in the next video, I'll be going over all the things that are wrong with Apollo 911 and what we're going to be doing to fix them, things that are outside of the engine. Thank you guys very much for tuning in, and I'll see you guys next time.